days ago, we explored some songs that Kinks leader Ray Davies wrote for other artists and bands. Unlike Ray Davies or Lennon and McCartney, Pete Townsend didn't hand out too many songs. But the songs that he gave away to other artists are worth a listen. And there's an interesting story to each one of them. So, without further ado, here are songs that Townsend wrote for other artists. Many people are not aware that Magic Bus, written by Pete Townsend, was originally given to another band. A group called The Pudding recorded it and released it as a single in April 1967, more than a year before Townsend and company issued their own version. The Pudding was a creation of band members from groups such as Hedgehoppers Anonymous and The Overlanders, who had a number one hit in the UK in 1966 with a cover of Michelle by The Beatles. All the members of The Pudding shared a flat in North London and joined forces to release this, their first and last single. Townsend wrote the song in 1965, and the band's management and publisher circulated the Townsend demo to label A&R department. The Pudding's version of Magic Bus was released by Decca, and unlike many obscure British singles from that era, it was also issued in the States. Despite getting a fair amount of airplay in some pirate radio stations in Britain, the single never charted. And the British press didn't seem too enthusiastic about it in their reviews either. The Melody Maker wrote, New Unit The Pudding, on a Townsend number which being understandably corny and commercial, The Who, didn't record. Not one of his most brilliant songs. The group's treatment isn't imaginative but very predictable. The arrangement, however, is surprisingly amusing and very tricky, giving the disc a lot of appeal as it gradually builds to a falsetto frenzy. A well-made record with a novelty appeal and therefore, possibly a hit. Disc magazine journalist Penny Valentine wrote, Pete Townsend wrote Magic Bus, an interesting little song done well by The Pudding. But halfway through, I lost interest. The Who didn't have any intention of recording and releasing the song. The only reason why they eventually decided to record it was mostly due to the fact that Townsend was taking too much time writing songs for Tommy and their label demanded a new single. The Pudding's version of the song was never a hit, so very few people realized that Magic Bus had already been released by another band the previous year. Another song by Townsend that was given away in 1967 was Lazy Fat People. Townsend wrote the song in 1966 after a meeting with Alan Klein, the American businessman who worked with both the Beatles and the Stones, with disastrous results for both bands. In 1966, Townsend and his solicitor Edward Oldham flew to New York and met with Klein. At the time, the band was having legal battles with producer Shel Talmy and hoped Klein could sort out the situation. However, the meeting didn't last long. Solicitor Edward Oldham quickly grew suspicious that Klein had designs on the band, and both he and Townsend decided to leave. In an interview later in the 70s, Pete Townsend commented, The song was about Alan Klein. We took along our solicitor, who is still our solicitor today, an austere conservative almost Edward Heath character called Edward Oldham, who just took two looks at Alan Klein and said, we're leaving. So we ate his caviar, had a look at the Statue of Liberty from his yacht, shat on his toilet, and went back to England. In fact, he paid my first class fare to the States. The song was initially offered to Episode 6, a London-based band which featured future Deep Purple members Ian Gillan on vocals and Roger Glover on bass. However, Episode 6 felt it was too much of a novelty song and passed on the offer. Comedy band The Baron Knights agreed to record it, and they released it as a single in March 1967. The Baron Knights started out as a proper rock and roll band in the early 60s and played with most of the big names from that era. However, the band gradually drifted into comedy around 1964. Their shtick was doing medleys with comical lyric changes of contemporary hits by contemporary bands such as the Rolling Stones, The Animals, and The Beatles.
journalist Penny Valentine wrote. Pete Townsend wrote it, and it really would have made a splendid Who single. As it is, it is a delight. The lyrics are joyous and the odd little quirky noises add charm to an already appealing record. Should be a hit, but perhaps, this sort of song really needs the Who. Who knows? Despite the positive reviews, the single failed to chart. I was a guy who love passed him by. This 45 by The Naturals has some historical significance. The song is the earliest published Pete Townsend composition. Townsend and company released their first single in July 1964 when they were still called The High Numbers. But this session came before that early single. The tune was recorded by The Naturals, a band that was formed in Harlow in late 1963. At the last count, there were 11 beat groups in Harlow, most of them youngsters starting off without much of a following. But one group, the Naturals, attracted enough attention and popularity to turn professional. They've made a number of records and have appeared several times on television. They practice in each other's houses. They say they've made enemies of their best neighbors, but that you don't know how many friends you've got until you've made a lot of money. Townsend wrote the song when he was still a member of a band called The Detours. The group also featured Roger Daltrey, John Entwistle, and drummer Doug Sandham, who would be replaced by Keith Moon a few months later. The Detours recorded a demo of the song in late 1963 at the home studio of Barry Gray, who wrote music for television puppet series such as The Thunderbirds. Wow, what a terrific group. Yes, you see, they're way out. The band connected with Barry Gray through Pete Townsend's father, a professional musician who had played sax in an RAF band conducted by Barry Gray early in the war. Dick James, the Beatles' publisher, heard the song and signed Pete Townsend to his company. In his autobiography, Townsend recalled, I was often very sarcastic about the music the Detours wanted to play. And I nearly came to blows with Roger over the musical direction of the group. It Was You was my first song, and it was recorded by The Naturals, a band from Essex. It wasn't a hit, but the fact that it was published at all gave me tremendous confidence. I felt I now had a right to speak up about the band's musical direction, and even get bossy about it. Roger was definitely in charge, but there was a new tension between us. In 1966, the song was also recorded by an Australian band called Chaos and Company. Later in the 70s, two members of the band joined British progressive group Jonesy. You can't join my game, even though you're a girl. Another song that Townsend handed out to another artist was Join My Gang, recorded and released in 1966 by Oscar, also known as Paul Nicholas. Born Paul Oscar Buzelink in the early 40s, this peculiar artist had his start in music in the early 60s, fronting a band called Paul Dean and the Dreamers, before joining Screaming Lord Such and the Savages as their keyboard player. With the streets of a London kind of never say yay. The river, the river. In the mid-60s, he changed his name to Oscar and got signed to Reaction Records, Robert Stigwood's label. His first single, released in 1966, was an excellent song called Club of Light. The song has become a cult classic among collectors of mod sounds from the 60s, and it has appeared on several compilations over the years. His second single was this Townsend composition called Join My Gang. The tune was a sort of innocent feminist-leaning song about a boy who invites a girl into his all-male circle of friends despite the sexist outcry he knows will ensue. Oscar was featured on Disc Magazine a few weeks after the single was released. Disc Magazine reported, Under the name of Oscar, this 21-year-old from Hertfordshire has made his comeback with Join My Gang, a song written by Pete Townsend. Oscar is naturally pleased that his disc has proved a climber. But he wants to be more than just a singer. He wants to be an all-round entertainer as well. Oscar would seem to have the right equipment to make it, for he will go into an impersonation of Elvis or actor James Stewart at the drop of a hat. Oscar still released three more singles for Robert Stigwood's label. One of them, released in January 1967, was a song written by David Bowie, 
who was still virtually unknown at the time. Over the wall we go. But Join My Gang wasn't the only connection that Oscar had with The Who. In the late 60s, he changed his name to Paul Nicholas, and he joined the British cast of the musical Hair, which was brought to London in 1968 by Robert Stigwood. He was subsequently cast in Stigwood's productions of Jesus Christ Superstar and Grease. And in the mid-70s, he played the role of Cousin Kevin in the film adaptation of Tommy. It won't be much fun being blind, deaf and dumb, but I've no one to play with today. In the late 70s, Paul Nicholas embarked on a short-lived pop career with three top 20 hits in Britain, and even a top five hit in the States, with the song Heaven on the Seventh Floor. Heaven on the Seventh Floor. As an actor, he has appeared on dozens of films and television series over the years. 